So this is from chapter four, problem 51 in the textbook. The data below lists information about 50 buildings, the years in, in which it was built, the height and feet, and the number of stories. If I go down, I've got the year, the height and feet, number of stories. And if I go down a little bit farther in the problem, I see that it says it wants to be used, the model I'm gonna to get to predict the height of a 40 story building. So that tells me that I wanna pretty much be using um, the number of stories as my input and the height as my output. So even though it gave me the year, the year actually is not an input or output value for this. It's nice to have the extra value, but it's not needed in this problem. So I'm gonna be using height and feet and number of stories. Um, I do wanna put the number of stories as my input. So that's gonna go into my, in my calculator as L1 and my height and feet as L2. So on my TID4 calculator, I'm gonna go into the stat button, S-T-A-T. I'm then gonna, in the edit menu, go into number one, edit. If you already have data in there, you wanna clear that data out, go up on the name of let's say L2 and hit clear. Move over up on L2, L1 and hit clear. And that just gets rid of all the data because you don't wanna have it all there. You're now gonna type in the number of stories, all 50 of those values into L1, and then their corresponding values of heights into L2. So go ahead and type those in. I've actually already got them typed in already. I'm just gonna go ahead and put them in. Um, sorry, so just type yours in, make sure you put your values in L1. I already have mine in here, so that's why I'm able to do it a little bit faster, except that I did it wrong. Um, but you would have to type those numbers in. So I've typed my number stories in L1. And then now two, I'm gonna type in my height. And so you have all your heights now in L2. I then would like to graph it. This row here is all the graphing that we have on our graphing calculator. I'm gonna type, press the Y1 to see if I already have something already in there. And I do, and I don't really wanna plot that also. So I'm gonna clear that out. Then I'm using the STAT button. So I wanna use the stat plot button. So I use the big second button and the Y equal gives me stat plot. I'm gonna go into plot one. I wanna make sure plot one is on. That means it's dark. The type is a scatter plot, which is the bunch of dots just all over the place. So that one has to be dark. My X list is L1. That's where I put my input values. My Y list is L2. That's where I put my output values the mark and the blue, the color is up to you if you even have color. I then wanna go ahead and graph it. If I press the zoom button, number nine is a zoom stat. What that will do is will set your window based on the data you have. So we wanna use that. You can either arrow down to number nine, hit enter, or just press number nine and I'll plot it up. One of the things I notice when I plot up this data is that I got some data that seems to kind of not fall where the rest of the data is. And that could be real data values. They could be honest to goodness values, or they could be values you typed in wrong, as I typed in wrong. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go check to see if they are. To help me out to see what they are, I'm gonna press the little trace button. Then I can use the right arrow and arrow through until I find those two values. So that one says it has an X of eight and 1136 for Y. I don't think any of the values have a height, a number of stories of only eight stories. So that probably is a wrong value. The next one is a height of uh, number of stories is four. And again, I don't think I have any that are height of stories of four with 551. So it sounds to me like those values are probably having some issues. So we're gonna go ahead and go back into stat, back into edit. I'm gonna go through and try to find those values. So here's my first one, 1386, should have a number of stories of 80, not just eight. So I'm gonna change that to eight, zero. Next one down, I see I have a four by itself. I have a 551 as a number, as the height, and it should be a 45. So I'm gonna change that to a 45. So this can happen where you can type in values wrong. 
I might want to just scan through and just make sure there's nothing else that's kind of weird. So just making sure you don't have any other values that are kind of off the off out of its way. This 1136 seems a little off, but I do have an 1136, so we're okay. And just kind of scanning through, I have a 1250. And then yes, I do actually have a 1250, so that's okay. So I just did a quick check to make sure you don't have any weird values that are going on. Now, if you hit graph, you can now see the dots kind of match up. There's my graph. You can take a picture of it if you want to put it in your homework um, or whatever you want to use. I now want to use technology to create an appropriate model for the data. So this looks like a line. It looks like a linear model. Those are one of the models we use. I could go into the modeling um, part of the chapter to see what the models look like. Um, there is a one that's called linear and it's y equals mx plus b. So I'm gonna go into my stat button. I'm gonna move over to the word C-A-L-K for calculate or calc. And when I come down through these, I see a lot of different choices, but the next one I see number four says L-I-N-R-E-G-A-X plus B. That means linear regression A-X plus B. There are other regressions, quadratic, cubic, vortex, and so forth. There's another linear regression A plus B-X. It just depends on how you like to look at it. It doesn't really matter. We're going to go ahead and do number four because I think this looks linear. My X list is where my input values are. That was my L1. My Y list is L2. That's where my output values are. Don't worry about the frequency list, but I would like to store my equation it comes up with. I'd like to actually have it plot up that equation we came up with. Um, to do that, I'm going to go sitting next to store regression EQ. And I'm a, I want to put it into my y equals. My y equals is a variable. So I'm going to type on the VARS or variables button. When I do that, it is a y variable I want to put in. So I'm going to do y vars. I want to put in a function, so number one. I got a bunch of different choices. It doesn't matter which one you pick. Might as well pick the very first one. So I'm going to put a y1 there, and I'm going to go down to calculate. I then hit calculate. It then calculates what that equation is looking like. It tells me my equation is y equals ax plus b. a is my one parameter, b is my other parameter. So it gave me now my equation and there's my model. So I can actually type this model in and that model is um, y equals a, which is 11.7, let's say, x plus B, which is 76.06, let's say. I'm round off to kind of what decimal places you think makes sense. So there's my equation, there's my model. I want to determine my R squared value from the model. On a linear regression, the calculator actually does give you your R squared value. It tells us it's 0 0.918. And what that means is 91.8% of the variability in the, in the um, height, because height was my output variable, is explained by the model. And that's pretty good. 91.8 is a pretty good model. If I want to, I can actually hit graph to see how well does it fit it. And it looks like it fits pretty good from the, some of the points are above the line, some are below, some are actually right on the line. So it does a pretty good job. They're not too far off from there. I want to use this model to predict the height of a 41-story building. 41 is not one of the heights, not one of the st stories I have. So I can't just read it off of here, but I can use the model to come up with it. So I can do this two different ways. I can do second calc. Um, and the reason I do second is because it's in blue above the line. So second trace gets me the calculate menu. I want to find it for a specific value. It asks me what the X value is. The X value is 41. So I type in a 41. The nice thing about this, is it shows you where that value is, shows it right there on the line, and it gives you the value of 554.3 or 554. Um, in uh, feet. So that's how tall a 41-story building is. 
Yeah, it's not exactly perfect because there are different materials you can make into it to make it a little bit taller or you can have different heights of your floors. But that's pretty much what it would look like. Um, and wants to know if I should trust it. And I would say I could because 41 is in between the values I'm given. So it looks like it does work. So it looks like it's okay. So this value does look like it actually works and we should trust it because it's within the original data, range of the original data. 